Hi everyone. I want to help give you a little bit of extra guidance for project two underscore 16. In this assignment, I'm asking you to take our tabular files from Galaxy and turn them into separate small files for every level of taxonomic classification. Because the way that the names are structured, um, the left hand side is domain, the right hand side is species. If we go through this in a system systematic way, it should be pretty easy to pull out species, pull out genus, pull out family, um, and keep continuing until we have a file for every type of classification from phylum down to species. So if you have two samples, every level of classification is going to make two files. So if I had my adult and child samples, I would have adult phylum and child phylum as two separate files. And I don't need to clean up the species names or the genus names or the family names. I'm going to leave them with um, their longer versions, but I just want you to be able to see how to take the data and split it into these separate parts. If you were doing microbiome research, this is something that you would do with a tool called Chime. So I'm going to show you a window of the Chime 2 viewer. You can see uh, they have a preview of data from real taxonomic bar plots. We can play around with this loading tool that lets you in real time on a website switch between taxonomic levels. So the first thing we see is level one. All of these samples, 100% of the reads map to the kingdom of bacteria. For level two, we see the phylum level. And we can keep going down a taxonomic level, look at class, look at order. I'm, I'm sorry, look at order and, and class and go all the way down to the genus level on this website and be able to see the taxonomic bar plot and get a snapshot of the diversity in each of these samples and see some trends, see some organisms or some types of organisms that are highly enriched in some samples compared to others that have different organisms um, that dominate their microbiome. So how do we do this? How do we split up the data at every level? Well, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to wanna to start a new project on our Studio Cloud and get the two original files from Galaxy. Um, so mine were step 39 and 41. Step 39 is the data corresponding to the child microbiome. Step 41 is the data corresponding to the adult. So I put that in my comments here just so I can keep track of which file is which. As I make my script, I'm going to have all number one variable names correspond to the child data and all two variable names correspond to the adult. So the first thing I'm going to do is use read.table where I specify the separation, the fill, and the call classes to make sure that everything reads in neatly. I can see that this is in indeed two columns. And if I click on it, I can see that it, the columns are being read cleanly. Um, if I click on the blue circle, I can even see that the types are correct. V1, that first column, is character, and V2, the second column, is numeric. Read in the second tabular file, and now I have two data frames. They're different numbers of rows because there were different numbers of assignments for my two samples, and now I'm ready to process them and break them up into separate files for species, genus, etc. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get the species. That's the last thing in the naming structure. And so if a row has that symbol, the pipe symbol followed by the letter S, I know that that's a species row. So I make a variable called species row one. And then I make a corresponding variable that has the rows that aren't species. How do I do that? The same command, all tax one, but I put an exclamation point in front of the grepl so that this data frame rest tax, and I, I called it rest tax because it's the rest of the taxonomic levels, don't include the species rows. So let's do some simple math to make sure that this works, right? 688 was my original number of rows. And now I have two data frames, 253 and 435. If I add those together, I get 688. So I know this worked perfectly. I have a list of rows that had species and I have the rest of the rows. Do the same logic for my second sample. 
and now I have an S rows 2 data frame that I could write to a file with the species and I have an S rows 1 that I can write to the file a write to the file with all the species for sample 1 and I have two rest tax data frames that I can use for the next levels in taxonomy. So now I'm going to use the same logic to find the rows in rest tax that have the letter G. If they have the letter G in rest tax, G is the final classification because I've already dumped all the species rows. Run rest tax, G rows two, rest tax two. I can keep going on with this logic for family, order, class, and finally for phylum. If I make sure that the phylum rows have a P in them, it will also get rid of those rows that were a problem last week for some people on their graphs, where it's a classification to the kingdom, so just to bacteria or to a domain. So the D and the K rows are not going to be included in my P rows. I can click on them to double check that that's true. And I see that there are no rows that don't have a P, that don't have a phylum. And so this would make a beautiful plot and it would give me a very similar result to what I get on the Chime 2 View website when I, from the pull down menu, select the phylum level of taxonomic bar plot. So that's your assignment for 216. Um, once you have separated out everything into data frames, you can use the right, you don't have to clean them up. You can just use the right command to write the first file for species. So you could call this species child and then copy that line and write a second file for species adult. You will have a large number of files at the end of this assignment and the files are what you upload to Canvas and turn in. Let me know if you have any questions about 2 underscore 16.